history that one time frame is related to another, you know, in, in a higher level, so that, so that there's almost like a simultane simultaneous aspect of our past and present and future going on from a much higher level. So one period does affect the other. There are reverberations, like ripples, that are cast in time from major events that affect other events or affect the possibility of other events even happening, you know, which gets more deeper um, into interesting areas. So, but it's just, just to ground it a little more, um, the idea here is that there are different, um, different shifts occurring each month in 2012 before we get to the end of the year where there is a kind of distribution system happening, a restructuring happening within the uh, body of time where there are structures being put in place, energetic structures being put in place, so that when that wave of love comes in at the end of the year, they'll, it will be able to flow through that like a river of love flowing through the body of time, so to speak. So you're saying that at the end of the year, everybody, it's, it's going to be a whole a lovely experience, not a bad experience. Well, part of that depends upon how much we clean up our act before that point. <laughs> because, oh, we don't have much time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, this, this is why, you know, it's interesting. Uh, because if you think about it, the same way like if we dealt with our own healing process, right? And if we're ignoring something and then, we, then it materializes physically, like, oh my God, I have this problem now, but you haven't dealt with the emotional or mental level of it yet, then obviously it's harder to heal it, right? Mm. So the more we can nip these things in the bud on the energetic level, the less we need to undergo physical changes to get our attention. So some of the prophecies of like tremendous amounts of natural disasters can be still averted. We've already avoided so many timelines. You think which so? Are potential yeah. scenario. Oh, we would have, New York should have been destroyed 10 times over by now if everybody, if everybody, if everybody who had prophecies about it were correct. Because, oh, yeah. because there's been How many times we've heard the end of the world and all that stuff? Oh, it's because, because there's so, but uh, that's good. It doesn't mean that they were wrong. It just means that there's been enough light and love held by enough people praying and doing intention work that there's stop it. divine grace has been able to come in to transmute that karma and change that timeline. Wow, that's good. That, yeah, so it's more like, hey, that's good, keep it up. You know? <laughs> so this idea is that it still is a valid principle, you know, but there is a certain degree of necessity for certain physical restructuring going on, just like if you're having a chiropractic adjustment to your body, almost so the energy can flow. That's still, you know, preferable than having surgery. Oh, that's <laughs> true. That's so it's true. the same thing for the Earth. I mean, having a, you know, a large earthquake here or there is preferable to having, you know, giant, you know, mega tsunamis or having like a Yellowstone erupt or something, which definitely is not something we want to happen. You know, I, I don't, and I don't think it needs to happen on that level. Um, but uh, so but part of the thing is that. This, think of like a distribution system like your, our electrical system in our society where we have the large wires you know, in our streets and the large towers that carry the, the electricity to our homes. The similar structure, the similar idea is happening, like an, like an analogy to the body of time, where in the meridians of, of our memory, of our collective memory, uh, there are these, there, there is a restructuring so that these, um, what, what they call time star beacons was a term that actually came to me first in, in one of the group events with it. And they're almost like antenna-like structures that are being put within certain time periods so that uh, you can actually journey. This isn't something that has happening only at the end of the year. Like certain light, certain light workers will be called to do this work, you know, each month this year is to really hold space. The way that you'd hold space and like pray for a certain area to have more peace or more love, it's like you may be called to hold space for a certain time period. You maybe hold the space to all of a sudden you may ask your angels or guides, okay, what timeline needs love and healing now? You know, you may get pulled back to ancient Egypt. You may get pulled to the Middle Ages. You might get pulled to ancient Greece. Really? You know, so there's this idea that to allow that, to allow that idea to percolate as an, even as an option. In other words, all um, this stuff has to heal before we can come to a certain point. Yeah, it, because otherwise the kundalini energy gets disrupted, and then you have all sorts of miasms and spasms that occur physically. Because as that wave of love travels back in time, it's like a spring that's compressing. You compress a spring, it's got to bounce back. But if, if in the turns of the coil, if there's gunk and stuff stuck in there, it's not going to bounce correctly. Right. So that kind of frequency impulse from that initial you know, movement can spill over and create like um, uh, ruptures where there should be something more seamless. Uh, so the idea is that by if we can clean up like chelation therapy again for the body of time, cleaning up those coils, cleaning up the past eras, so that when the love comes in, that compression wave can bring us into it and can launch us. Are we all going to feel this love coming in? Oh, I mean that's definitely the point. I mean I think like I said, a lot of people will. Oh, I think a lot more people are going to check out because they can't deal with it. You know? Really? Well, I mean that's just that's not you know. Well, they said that. I mean you know it's years natural, ago. You know, there's going to be a lot of people that aren't going to be around in the next couple of years just because it's. It's not, you know, it's, there's just major shifts happening. It's not, it's yeah. not to be like, oh my God, I'm sad and crying. No, it's just, no, they're going to go to a great place. It's just, there's earth schools evolving and we can't keep playing the same game 
over and over again for thousands of years and think that nothing can shift. This is ridiculous. This is like that's like the definition of insanity, right? Doing the same thing over and over again, you know, and expecting same, the same different results. Different results, exactly. So yeah, right. You're doing the same thing. You're going to get the same results. Exactly. So you know, there's only so much that that consciousness of the earth will take before she takes back her land, so to speak. So all right. You know? So this love's going to come in. We're going to feel it. <clears throat> what are we supposed to be doing in the meantime, physically, ourselves <laughs> as human beings, especially people who are not as in tune as you are? Yeah. Well, no. I mean, the more people are following their hearts, that's the most important thing. Living in the moment, following your heart, doing your mission, like your heart's desire, whatever that is, you mm -hmm. know, being of service and whatever you've come to be of service is what we need to be doing. The more people that are in their center and following their heart's desire and not just something selfish, but really how we can help society or help other people or it can be something small. It doesn't be something magnitude wise. It's more about being, you know, being receptive. Well, if everybody med did something small, the yeah. whole, it would be a better place. Exactly. I mean, so there's still the same basic formula on the small, on that idea on the, just on the basic metaphysical level. But like I said, there may be some people that may be more pulled to do more active participation and, you know, and, and healing to healing these different time frames. And I mean, I'll give you one more example. We did one recent group meditation on, on late, uh, this past February on the new moon, February 21st. There was a big wave of energy coming in between uh, this uh, new moon and February 21st. Uh, and, and it culminated just a couple of days ago on, on the time of this recording on, on March 6th of 2012, um, <clears throat> which also corresponded to huge amounts of solar flares that were being erupted on that, on that day, um, which is like the light of the sun wanting to ignite the earth so that she can bring that love and light back through this new opening in time, you know, to be able to heal that. Uh, and <clears throat> basically one of the things that came up was that uh, during the new moon in, on February 21st, we had to send light back specifically to, from the time of King Arthur, 500 uh, AD, up until the Middle Ages uh, in, the, in, the, in the British Isles. And that that period um, needed some healing in the sense. But and one of the visualizations, which might be helpful for viewers if they feel pulled at work, think of like if you're creating a, a magic circle around you or a sacred space around you and you're, you're, you're honoring the directions and, and just creating that, that feng shui kind of balance in your personal space. Uh, this idea can be also expanded to not inc only include your space physically, as in a, a geographical or as a, a or the concept of space, but also as the idea of time, where instead of like a circle that you know covers you know your room, you know, with the size of the radius of the circle being you know the number of feet right in your room, this the, the circle would represent a number of years, an interval of time, and not just a circle, but it can be more like like a, like a citadel or like like liquidy, like light watchtower of love. And so that uh, kind of like a background canvas where you can see different snapshots of those times, periods, you know, that are like strewn, you know, on that canvas. Or like if you're editing a, you know, a roll of film and there are different pieces, there are different snapshots of different time periods that are seen together against a common background. And that common background is more of a sanctified area, more of an idea of like whatever symbol or color that you'd visualize love and healing to be about to put it against that background and to hold space for that, you know, the same way that you nurture like your inner child if it was hurt or as part of you that was traumatized. You know, what maybe so much war that happened during those time periods, you know, there may need, need still be some healing reconciliation done there. So we had this visual that was coming in where it was like the time period from 500 AD up until the Middle Ages, and Merlin energy was coming in, different hired like knights at a round table mm -hmm. energies were coming in, mm -hmm. and the symbol of the Holy Grail was coming in, but it was like being upgraded with new crystal jewels around it to represent the new possibility for the Divine Mother to give birth to new forms once love was really included. Isn't you know? the Holy Grail something that hasn't been found yet? Well, this is more as a principle, uh, oh, as see. like the sacred feminine, the womb energy, you know, the, the chalice, the cup of spirit that we all have inside us. That, that is how the creative vessel through which we give birth. You know, what qualifies our ability to give birth? You know, like, are we doing it out of pain or is it a loving birth? You know, are we adding, you know, everything we need in it to create a new reality that is not repetitive of past imprints, but rather something that is truly new and inspiring. You know, so the idea there is that you may get inspired to see different symbols from different cultural time periods that you can use as a visual tool to like see that, and maybe you might have had incarnations in that time frame, and you in that period is sending you energy here now. So the idea that's there is like, <laughs> like looking into that. So it's not just about you having a past life that's like reaching into you, but rather the idea that you know you can call on your ancient elders because if you were had a magician lifetime or a shamanic lifetime, you know that part of you is definitely capable. sending energy yeah. to this life. Yeah, and so the idea is that those ripples in time can cross and you can synchronize and, and, and which and means that to... right now, here and now, we can send uh, positive energies to our future lives as well. Well, the importance here, exactly. Thank you for reminding me. The idea here is that you also don't want to just focus on the past. You also want to be open to the idea of calling it energy from the future. Right. Because uh, especially, I would say, between now and 2025 is the longest, is a long-term um, continuum that's been coming in a lot. 
Uh, but specifically, 2014, 2015 is a nice time frame, you know, because there's a lot of new energies that'll be fully ground at that point that that want to help us now, and as as a, as a way to kind of steer us as as a collective towards that positive timeline potential. Because there are negative forces that are trying to move us towards negative reality. Well, potentials. that's true. Yeah. So this is the idea why we so the more we heal these past, you know, um, like discontinuities, it's almost like our vertebrae and our spine, you know, uh, but like it's like a temporal corridor instead of a physical spine. Um, so literally, there have been like timeline wars on higher levels fought, which is a, kind of like a sci-fi story, it sounds like, but there have been different groups on higher levels that have you know, tried to control different time periods or, or, or create enough stress in one area during one time frame so that it could carry over into the next. Mm. You know, it's like a, like a farmer and a harvester. They, know, you know, they want to be aware of the soils they're planting their seeds in. Think of the wars we're going on in the Middle East. That's really one of the bigger reasons we're still bu doing this bullshit in the Middle East is because you know, the forces that are controlling you know, the military industrial complex and the ones that are, you know, have been dying to create more stress, more war to fulfill lower aspects of revelation so that we can have more fear. And that out of that fear, they can harness collective shadow energy and perpetuate misery, which doesn't need to be here anymore. You know, so an esoteric level, looking at political events is very interesting because you can see that it's not just about like oil anymore and just about economy, because the powers that be are so rich, they don't need any of that anymore. You know? sure, <laughs> so for yeah. them, it's about control of consciousness and the ultimate level of slowing down Earth's evolution is their goal. So that's you what know? they want, that kind of control oh, yeah, now, they're, huh? they're, they're doing everything they can. That's why the chemtrails, all the sprays that are going going on ex you know, exceedingly across so many different cities. They're trying everything they can, psychologically, energetically, electromagnetically, chemically, to create a contaminated sy system in our bodies, in our society, where that new evolutionary energy isn't able to fully ground yet. You know, literally trying to short circuit our new DNA. Like, these people are 100% aware of that. I mean, I, we had confirmation from a XCI contact directly about the chemtrails, who talked about the fact that the main purpose of chemtrails was to negatively affect the genetic structure of humanity to try to slow down the evolutionary process. Are they now, obviously, succeed? these people know a lot more if they're working on that level. They're aware. They're scared because they know that when we, society wakes up to 24-strand DNA, it's going to be like X-Men. <laughs> I mean, but not necessarily as dramatic, but the point is that we're mind over matter, full psychic ability. So you don't think they're going to succeed telepathy. then? No, but they've, they've, they've been successful at slowing parts of it down for a lot of people that should have been awakened already, mm -hmm. but other people are breaking out of it, you know, mm -hmm. and a certain number of us have had to slow down certain things because we were under attention. I mean, I had a lot of attention from negative people in, in these little power circles over the years and uh, had had physical run-ins with them and threats and, and all, all sorts of things, so that could be a topic of another show. Uh -huh. but, but definitely, you know, this stuff is very real, and then these, these, these shadow groups exist, and they use very advanced technology to try to harass and coerce, you know, or slow down people, you know, well, or, 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 or they want to recruit them, you know, that also happens. <laughs> they rather I, have them on their side. I remember that retreat that uh, that we were on that time, and um, you were saying that that there were. Are you talking about these these twenty five families that control everything? Oh, or at least a large number of things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, that would go back to the, yeah, the idea of the Illuminati, right, or the system. Yeah. I mean, I, and yeah, them as well as you know other other groups you know that are spawned off of that larger structure. But I mean, there are obviously people in our own you know, and it, there are people in the NSA. There's different agencies that are involved that have their little shadow you know groups, little covert block out projects groups that the rest of the agency doesn't even know about necessarily, you know, where they carry out these, these agendas for other people behind the scenes or for the power structures that are the real, the real puppeteers, you know. Um. So what do we do in the meantime between now and December? I mean, we've got like nine months to go. <laughs> well, I get that. I, wanna, I don't want to have just an end point perspective as a terminal point for people. When you think about it, think of it more as that it's a crossroad point that's going to be a major... Uh, so I mean, in other words, one, one thing is going to, um, uh, you know, something's going to die, something else is going to uh, uh, come about. Absolutely. And, and, and how, and whether it's through cesarean birth or whether it's through a beautiful natural dolphin orgasmic birth is the question. You know? oh, <laughs> otherwise, we're going to take it the easy way or the hard way. Exactly, 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 <laughs> exactly, exactly. The very simplest way to put it, yeah. And so if it's a harder way, more disasters will happen. If it's easier way, we don't need to have that much drama. And what you know? will determine this now? Well, a couple of things. I mean, if we go to war with Iran, it's going to be a little rougher time. Is that, you know? is that in the... Um... Well, look what's happening right now with the politics. Israel's dying to go in there. You know, they're, they've been pumping up. They've been, they've been trying to create that timeline for a long, a long time now. Mm. But there have been higher forces of light that have slowed that down, or have transmuted that, because there are positive people who, are, who do work within our, you know, our agencies here, and I mean, it's not just evil people working at these intelligence communities or military, you know, divisions. There are definitely people that are light workers that are in there, and there are different levels of things that occur behind the scenes, different agendas. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, it's, they're, they're definitely being like, you know, bullies in the playground, you know, in terms of you know Israel and the U.S. trying to like, you know, bully themselves in. It's not to justify anything that's going on in Iran, but the idea is obviously. 
you know, it is about the larger forms of negativity. And, and it gets into deeper conspiracy stuff about stargates, ancient, ancient portal points where that ancient civilizations used to travel in and out of. Uh, there are some of these ancient fire temples uh, that were connected to the Zoroastrian tradition in Iran that are still there. And they're not just like temple ruins. Those are gateway points for some higher light, civil, higher light beings can come in and out of. And they're major intersection points for huge amounts of ley lines, magnetic field lines that converge there. So on a higher level, it's really disruptive. If we would have US come there and bomb those sacred sites, it could create cascade effect that can affect the entire planet. It's not just about Iran. If they blow, shit up, they blow stuff up there, it's going to create ripples. There are higher beings that are coming in to help co compensate for that possibility because it was very tenuous a few years ago when the guides were saying, yeah, if that happened a few years ago, we really would be in a lot more trouble at this point. You know, but I think we're safer in that zone of respect. But the idea still of you know, you know, having another area where we have more modern day sacrifice through the guise of war, <laughs> you know, where people are unnecessarily slaughtered, you know, it just perpetuates a cycle of negativity that started eons ago, which is why they keep trying to infiltrate those points and create negativity so there are doorways that are opened. In other words, it's like psychological back doors so people think, oh, nothing can ever change. We're another war again. Oh, this society is the same again. You know. Well, somebody <laughs> along the way told me that, um, and it might have even been you, that by the end of this year, things are going to get straightened out. We're going to see a thousand years of peace. Well, I, I, I never use a thousand year term, but because for me, it's not about a thousand. To me, it's, it's, it's a permanent kind of stretch of like well, a new society. It would be nice. Yeah, sure. <laughs> because then we're also under the full protection of these higher light civilizations. So even at that point, we won't have any, any, any more drama with the negative ETs that have been around for too long messing around with things. So what's going <laughs> to happen with them? They're going to get kicked they're, away? They're increasingly getting kicked away. And I mean, and in a higher level, we, uh, some, many of us have been involved in higher battles with them on, a, on, a, on an astral level as well, doing some more specialized work. And um, I've had some recent drama with them, which, uh, uh, yeah, this longer story, but there are definitely people with light workers who are really allied with Archangel Michael who are more active and wanting to like hold space for like divine justice and really call in energy to uh, counteract these negative doorways or counteract negative situations uh, that, that involve negative extraterrestrials, you know, because these negative extraterrestrials, one of the things they're trying to do now, they're, they're trying to maintain proximity by, by uh, affecting people that they're hooked into. Energetically, they're, they, they'll, they'll cord themselves through certain people. The same way you have entities attached to your field, it's the same thing. So the ones that are around can really main, mainly maintain themselves through old contracts, but we can, we can erase those contracts the same way you would with entities. So a lot of them are just working still through people that are not fully aware of it, you know, or they're trying more desperate tact to say, oh, you need me, I'm here with you, you know, that kind of thing. It's like, no, get out of here. <laughs> You're just like a galactic bully. Get out of here, you know? <laughs> you, have, you have no space in my life anymore. You know, or this planet. You've been messing around too many times with free will. And, get, it's like, get lost and you can report them. So there are higher positive light civilizations. Report them to who? Like the Arcturians. <laughs> well, the higher light groups from Arcturus are coming in. And they're, they're like higher galactic knights at a round table. They're like the higher, you know, if you want to call, you know, 911, you know, to kick out a burglar that's trying to break into your house. Mm -hmm. It's like calling in the higher galactic light beings to come in and kick those idiots out. Almost like superheroes, you know? <laughs> huh? <laughs> yeah, but the multi-dimensional, so they can come in there with their light ships and like close down the portals and ex extract them. Uh -huh. you know? And it's the same way as you call an angel to help you extract the demonic entity from someone's field. It's the same thing on the next level. It's just, you know, more refined in the higher frequency. Okay, know? so the end of 2012 comes. That's topic. <laughs> All this stuff happens. Everything is straightened out. Everything is wonderful. Wonderful. Well, I mean, I'm, Where do we go well, from I'm, I'm still cautious about between now and through 2013 because when I when I scan the timeline, and I've had this with a few other people too, like I see 2014 and 2015, and from that point on, beautiful, like everything's awesome, like and we have full new institutions that are going to be created from the higher extraterrestrials, amazing study, but because it's still dependent upon free will and what happens between now and the end of 2012, how much work gets done each month, there are still permutations that are possible. So 2013 is still. A, like a fluidic membrane right now, fl fluidic canvas. Uh, so I oh, was not, anything gonna happen. So or? yeah, a lot, a lot of things are still possible there. And either way, so that's why we're like we got to hold the hold the fort down, so to speak, and release set our intentions. And part of that is about this coming May and June. We need to really be consciously accelerating our love potential, what we want to ground in May and June, because May and June, there are two major eclipses happening that are connected with the Pleiades and with Orion, and there's a major what they call Venus transit happening in early June. This is going to be major, major uh, doorway points for huge amounts of energy to come in. And how are we supposed to, <coughs> how are we supposed to uh, treat this? How are we well, supposed to? Well, think of it as a, as, a, as a forerunner for the end of the year. Okay. Things you want to have done at the, by the end of the year or things you would love to see in society right. or in your life. Right. <coughs> Conceptualize that in May and June. In other words, then, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, imagine it and, and, I mean, even start now in your meditation, visualize May as like a canvas, a painting. Right. What do you want to paint in that month? Uh -huh. What do you want to erase from that possibility? Right. 
Right. <laughs> and see that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then, so then, what you're saying is that May and June of 2012, we have to be on the alert. We have to be doing positive things, thinking positive thoughts, projecting positive outcomes. Yes. 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 And that will help. Oh yeah. <laughs> hey, hear that, yeah, everybody? Yeah, yeah, positive. Yeah, be definitely, positive. Definitely. <laughs> Through May and June. Let's especially, bring about especially. all the good stuff, huh? Well, because it's going to empower the seeds that are going to spawn up by the end of the year. So it uh -huh. is, this is extra reason. <laughs> okay, so we're telling the audience now, <laughs> the people that watch my show, and there's a lot of them out there, mm -mm -mm. that we have to be positive. We have to just think <laughs> positive thoughts, do positive things. And, and, and heal your shadow, because you can't just be positive if you, if you haven't dealt with your shadow. But how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, so it's basically, well, that, that's a whole long story in itself, right? I mean, mm -hmm. having forgiveness. You know, healing your anger issues, healing your jealousy issues, healing any parts of yourself that are fragmented, you know, or felt separate from the light and love, you know, of who you are now, or who you want to be. Okay. You know, in any unresolved relationships or charges you have with people, like you want to try to resolve that before the end of the year, just because it'll be easier on your body. Before the end with, of the to year. To deal with the new energies, otherwise everything's getting amplified. So anything that's unresolved now is just getting stepped up because like adding, adding extra energy <coughs> is just going to amplify whatever you have in front of you. Yeah, yeah. So. This, all right, yep. so, so like the high spin cycle of a washing machine, yeah? <laughs> it's going to spin around more and more, so small things can have greater impact as they come around. Yeah, well, I mean, everybody with their thoughts and with their actions and everything can contribute to, like, as I mentioned before, the collective consciousness. You know, if the collective consciousness gets together, starts having, doing positive things, having positive thoughts, then we'll bring about positive results. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and one last thing I mentioned along the line of time healing is that what's also coming up is that Atlantis, the energy of Atlantis and Lemuria, two of the most two of the oldest cultures, <coughs> are also coming up increasingly to kind of be healed a, or used as a reference point. Atlantis specifically, there's a lot of new energy coming into the Atlantic Ocean where Atlantis was at, and also to heal our power issues, to look at our idea of where did our distortion of power come from, and to be able to work with that idea of not needing to repeat cycles of catastrophe or cycles of misuse of power. You know, so take the, take it that far back if you need to <laughs> in uh -huh. your own meditation or intention setting. You know. Uh huh. Uh huh. So, um, okay, then. <laughs> What else is there? It's a lot, right? Yeah. That's it. Uh, a, I mean, we, and all those areas. Can a go lot to digest like here. Yeah. Lay, layers and of that. Um, trying to think of anything else more. Well, obviously, oh yeah, the sun is, like I said, is becoming more and more important to work with. So, as the weather gets warmer, wherever you are, definitely the importance of doing outdoor meditations in nature, I would say, is pivotal. You oh yeah, know, you know, <laughs> take a walk. Grounding in the earth, trees, breathing in, really working with the sun as 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 a meditative template. Um, where you, where, you, where you can see uh, the energies, where you can really breathe in the energy of the sun into each of your chakras, you know, or, or into your tree of life, or just see yourself as a rainbow being. Because mm -hmm. the idea is that the sun is giving us frequencies that we can use to help us in our ascension process, which is about raising our frequencies to the heart and transforming our body through love. And, 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 and so the sun is a direct corridor for that unified light that is coming in like a full spectrum vitamin of the frequencies we need in each moment and perfection. Will we so, feel differently? Oh my God, just doing any type of active sun meditation and we'll be actively shifting your whole metabolism, your kundalini. And, and with the and whole now, transition of 2012 and all that, we will... Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that's for sure. We'll, uh, have, we'll be on a higher vibration, we will feel better. Well, like I said, you know, I, I, it, it, may, it may take until 2014 to fully kick in, potentially, but that's still variable, depending upon what happens between now and then the year, and there's too many fair factors right now, mm -hmm. you know, that, that are at play still, you know. To say absolutely with certainty, you know. You know. So you're I'm so hopeful that we might get visited before 2014. Maybe it'll happen at the end of the year or 2013 with my original vision of it, but I don't know yet. <laughs> so you're thinking there's going to be like some big visitation that everybody's going to know oh. about, and there's going to be no well, way yeah, that, that, that yeah. the media can hide it and say yeah. it never happened. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and again, they're here more as spiritual harbingers for our new growth, not just as a, as a new, you know, stage, a new distraction on the stage of life. <laughs> you know, it's more like, no, to help us show that we're moving into a new stage of creation, and they represent part of the new family that we're reconnecting with. Mm-hmm. <coughs> I see. I yeah, see. Yeah. So then, so then when, when all of this comes down, then 
uh, it's not going to be like, not going to go unnoticed. Everybody is going to be aware that something different is happening, that there's changes being made. Uh, I mean, I think it's already happening. Certain people are being aware of different body pains, different aches, different kinds of physical changes that are happening in our, in our, in our being, you know. Yeah, but everybody's just saying, oh, you know, I'm yes. getting old. I got the aches and pains of somebody that's getting old. <laughs> yeah, of know? course, of course. Like, you know, younger generations are saying this now. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, no, it'll, it'll be very dramatic by that point. I mean, that, that, that you can't deny it yeah. when it comes in. It won't be something that can be contested. So. Yeah. All right, well, that's, that's, uh, that's good to know. Um, uh, you know, I'm sure that, uh, that everybody is thoroughly confused now. <laughs> 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 and also, you know, anybody can also find me on Facebook under my name as well. At okay. Some point. Well, you know what? <laughs> uh, let's let's uh, spell your name because it's, it's Popilac, but it doesn't spell that way. Oh, yeah. P-O-P. I O T E K. It should probably come up as the beginning of, of the show, though. I'm sure. <laughs> it did come up at the beginning of the show. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I'm the only one on Google and Facebook with that name, so I'm pretty hard to be anonymous. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's not a common so, name. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's not a common name at all. And as a matter of fact, uh, if they go, well after after the show airs on CTV, and then it'll it'll go over to Facebook, and everyone can get uh, YouTube, a yeah, lot YouTube. of not Facebook, oh, Facebook but yeah. that uh, YouTube. Right. <laughs> I get them mixed up. Everybody <laughs> does that, right? And, uh, That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, yes, YouTube. You just go to YouTube, put in spiritual exploration. You can type in my name, Christine Chavon. Then you can type in Stephen's name, and uh, the shows that he did with me will come up. The Kabbalah and this one now about 2012, and uh, and also there's a, a whole slew of other shows and more that are going to be put in. So you can watch spiritual exploration on YouTube just about any time you want to. So. And for anybody living in the New York area, that's Caesar show. I also do a lot of outdoor meditations in the, in the warm weather. You want to give you a phone number or anything? <coughs> um, phone number? Okay, or sure. Or phone yeah. number or uh, the web, uh, web address, whatever. Well, I, 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 I delete work more through Facebook. It's easier, easier to friend Facebook? people that way. Facebook? Yeah. Okay, so then they would go to Facebook and type your name. Send me a friend request. Yeah. Yep. A friend request. Yeah. Okay, and then they would be able to um, to even get in touch with you, I guess. Yeah, huh? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Well, in the meantime, uh, I really want to say I know you're having. I, had, I, I, I got is, sick a few days ago. And, and not only after that, major but when you're talking yeah. as much as you're talking, your throat dries out. And yeah, well, that's just usually not a problem, but yeah, I, was, I went through a little bit of physical challenges. Had a lot of uh, stuff going on last week. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, anyway, yeah. though. So, uh, but anyway, though, I want to thank everybody for watching tonight and uh, take care and have a good evening. Oh. Good night. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>